Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. So you're recording and you're going live. I'm going to record and go live. And here we go in three, two, one. And we are now possibly, maybe, live. partially live. Look at, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You know, apparently my hand. Yeah, are... so, so, yeah, so, so it, 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 it's, not, it's not very good at extremities. <laughs> <laughs> the plugin well, is not very good at extremities. I'm using the Zoom virtual background and you're oh. using Chrome, Chroma Cam, right? Yes, I'm using Chroma Cam. So the thing about Chroma Cam is, or whatever it's called, yeah, Chrome, Chrome Cam, something like that. I installed that thing and it, it apparently doesn't like the drivers of the camera in my computer, in my laptop, because yeah. it gave me all kinds of problems. So you know, I, it just, it just takes like 10 seconds to spin up. It's yeah. And it, it is pretty buggy. Yeah. And then when I uninstalled it, my other camera was like gone. <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> people watching live, people watching live are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> Hey guys, if you're joining us live, um, our Seller Roundtable guest was uh, not able to make it today. Um, we think they may be eating their turkey early or something. So it's just going to be Amy and I uh, talking about all the fun things that have been going on the last few weeks. And not only Andy and I, but also all of our live Zoomers that are That's here right. with us. Yep, absolutely. Um, they, can, so they can get involved if they want to with questions or raising their hand if they'd like raising to raising their hand like just like just like in class guys you know the deal you see in the chat i would like to speak and you raise your hand and then we will let you in maybe <laughs> <laughs> so what has been going on lately andy so you know the first thing that i would love to talk about is the what we're doing recently, right? Like we started this whole uh, new website called Rebate Jet, and that's yes. kind of cool. Yeah, we we did. It's actually been in development for a while. It's stealthy. It's been stealth in stealth <laughs> mode. Um, and um, yeah, so we're 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 doing that in in stealth mode. Um, and um, we decided so, to go live a little bit earlier than we were planning just because we heard that there's some other people doing some other things in the works. And we want to make sure people know that, you know, we were there first. Exactly. Um, That's the most important part. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> nanny, nanny, nanny. <laughs> no, um, we were not there first for rebates, of course. Um, that's no. a, that, that type of service has been around. But some of the other things that we are going to put into our service um, well, and Andy, let's talk about that. Like for a while when we, so we've been working on rebate jet for a while, but we kind of took a break for a little bit because initially we sent Amazon an email, right? Because we wanted to make sure that whatever we were doing was with, that we had in writing, that everything was good to go with terms of service and with our service and all of that. And then Amazon made that big change to their terms of service for a while. What was the major change? It was um, something about like no compensation, even before or after. Yeah. At yeah. any time. And so we were like, okay, so what, not even rebates? Like, how does that work? Right. Um, so, you know, and of course, Amazon can't stop somebody from offering a manufacturer's warranty or, you know, whatever, but so for a while, we kind of put the project on hold because we were like, oh, how is this going to turn out, you know? Um, and we, we waited and we watched the rebate community and made sure that nothing was really, you know, there was no hiccups there. And, um, and then at the same time, this other stuff happened with Amazon where, you know, suddenly what the last live that we did, we talked about... Um, all the changes that were made, how there's a lot more focus on advertising and having to pay to play and, um, and organic results getting pushed down. And suddenly Andy and I have a liquidation group and um, suddenly our numbers and our number of posts and our membership numbers in our liquidation groups just went up like crazy, right? 
um, the number of people liquidating products period just went up. And maybe that's normal for Q4 too, because people are just wanting to get rid of their stuff before having to pay extra storage fees. Um, who knows, but either way we noticed an increase. So we thought, well, what if rebate jet could be more than just a rebate site? And that's when we started talking about, you know, what could it become? And so of course we're launching with just the basic um, rebates. And maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, what makes us a little bit different than, um, than some of the other rebate sites, Andy. Yeah, so first of all, uh, of course, you know, it, it, with to stay within Amazon terms of service, uh, we are suggesting that you guys do not ask for any type of review if you're using the service. If you're using the service, um, what you can expect is, you know, you're just trying to get your product out there. You can look at it like any type of other, you know, paid marketing, paid promotion, things like that. Um, you know, what you're trying to do is just, you know, get your product out there. If it's a new product or if it's a stale product, um, you know, promote it and, um, you know, things like that. So um, what, what we want people to realize though, is that this is just the beginning of a larger platform that we have a lot of really cool stuff planned for. We're not gonna go too deep into it because we don't want our competitors to, <laughs> to copy us. Uh, we wanna be out the door before they're like, hey, that's a good idea. We wanna jump on that too. Um, so um, hopefully within the next week or two, we'll have, um, you know, not only rebates, but uh, but then also the, uh, the liquidation portion. Um, and where we're different than a lot of the other current um, sites out there is we're gonna we're gonna be really cost effective, um, especially out of the gate. We want you guys to get into the platform, to use it. Um, so you know, instead of charging you like per code or or things like that, we're charging you nothing for a free account, like for the base account. Um, so you can just get in, get in, try it, you know, see how it works. Um, and then we're charging you just a small fee that covers like our you know like PayPal fees, like when you guys pay us when we have to write checks to, um, you know, to people for the rebates, things like that. It's just pretty much to cover our costs. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, in, even when we do, um, you know, start expanding and things like that, we plan on being the most cost effective, the best, um, you yeah. know, the best deal, not only the best deal out there, but the most features and um, the best service overall. Yeah. And we want to know what you guys want to see. So we're going to be opening up a, um, a community group and, you know, just taking your feedback and, um, you know, we do feel really strongly about this community and, um, and building it together and what everybody has to contribute and offer to it. So, uh, we look forward to working with you guys on it and, hearing your feedback and um, it's, yeah, it's all very new for us. So we've been working really hard on it and uh, it's exciting though. But the other thing too is Amazon giveaways, right? So that happened where Amazon stopped doing giveaways along with their big change. So this is a really great way to, um, to also be able to still do a giveaway. You know, the other cool thing about it is on Amazon giveaways, you couldn't message the person that claimed your giveaway, right? But with rebate chat, you can message the person that claims your 100% off rebate. Now, can you ask them for a review? Yes. Do they have to leave one? No. I mean, because there's no guarantee that, you know, you can't, you can't buy a review in that way, right? Because that would, again, be against um, TOS. But you can at least message them and ask for feedback. Um, say, hey, you know, would love to know what you thought of the product. Thanks for claiming our rebate. And you know, it gives you that, that opportunity to, to do that. So, um, and then it also gives you the opportunity to do what giveaways did, which the, the reason that giveaways were part of every launch plan that I did with my clients was to get page visits, right? The whole point, when you first write a listing on Amazon, you're not exactly indexed yet, right? You need to get page visits to get indexed and be seen as relevant for certain keywords. Um, so, you know, the more the page visits that you get, the more relevant that you're seeing throughout your list for the keyword phrases throughout your listing. Um, so it's really important, uh, of course, even before you start PPC, like you can start PPC if you want, if you're going to be really targeted with your manual campaigns. Um, product targeting campaigns are really good for that because you can tell Amazon, no, I, I want to show up in this exact product's uh, search page. And um, then when somebody clicks 
your ad from that product search page, Amazon is going to see you as very relevant for the same keywords that that product is already indexed for, right? So it's just a great way. If you're going to do a manual campaign from the start with your PPC during launch, that's a great way to tell Amazon, yes, this is exactly what I want to be seen as relevant for, as well as some of your medium to long tail keywords, um, you know, in a, in a phrase and exact match campaign. Uh, you can do an auto campaign, but in the beginning, if you're not indexed for that much, this is a great way, you know, you can use a super URL with rebate jet and get those page visits and also get some of your initial medium to long tail relevancy identified that way. Right. Yeah. We, we don't want to be the platform of, you know, people getting, you know, re getting, um, you know, paid to, to get reviews. What we want you guys to do is to use a platform to, um, get exposure and then also communicate what people don't realize. A lot of people are so worried with getting Amazon reviews, but what you can really use the platform for, um, Amy was talking about the messaging earlier. You know, one of the most powerful things you could do with that messaging service is to go back and ask them and say, Hey, did you try the product? What did you like? What did you not like? Um, you know, how could we improve it? Um, you know, what was the packaging like, you know, getting all that super valuable information from people so that you can iterate on that product and, you know, make it the best that it can be. Um, with the way that Amazon is now, crappy products are not going to be around for, for, for very long. So, um, you know, th those are the kinds of things that, that we want to enable you guys to do. We want you also to be able to, you know, not have to, you know, dispose of any inventory. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, retail stores that, 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 you know, might be able to take that inventory and resell it or, other Amazon sellers who may be a little more experienced that go, oh, that's a great product. I can sell that. Um, you know, so that way, you know, we're hoping that we can help you guys. You know, those of you who, um, you know, end up buying too much, you know, too many units of something or, you know, deciding Amazon's not for you or whatever. Um, you know, we want to help you guys um, however we can in terms of, of getting that stuff liquidated. Uh, the cool thing about that service as well, at least in the beginning, is once again, uh, we're probably just going to charge you guys like a really small flat fee. Um, and just so that you guys can get on there and, um, you know, we can connect, uh, you know, seller to seller and, and you guys can, can, you know, get rid of that inventory. So, um, yeah. yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. Yes. And speaking of... Uh what are we talking about liquidation and maybe somebody else can sell that. Oh my goodness. Um, I cannot believe I've been, you know, on a lot of client calls lately where we've been discussing like some, um, I was on one this morning where this, um, client had run out, was out of stock and was just restocking their inventory. So we we're kind of talking through like a little bit of a, like a mini relaunch strategy and, I cannot believe how many holiday and gifting type keywords that people are not taking advantage of. You guys look at your products, look at the opportunities that you have. Think about the ways people might be searching for your product during the holidays. If you were searching during the holidays for your product, and you weren't thinking about the product, you were thinking about who it is for or what it is used for, um, I'm sure you can use some of the techniques that you already know to discover keywords and find some amazing gifting keywords. Because I was looking today, Andy, and I couldn't believe the results. Like I couldn't believe the lamos <laughs> that were on some of these search pages. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like how are people not taking advantage of some of these really cool keywords um, for the holidays, right? So don't, you don't just want to, the trick is you guys, you don't just want to advertise for that. So let's say you find like three different types of gifting keywords or um, gift ideas, keywords, that kind of thing. Let's say you find those, right? You don't just want to throw them in your PPC campaigns because if you take our PPC masterclass, you will learn how PPC works, how your match types work, how your listing shows up for, um, for a bid and where it shows up. And so the, the thing is, if your listing is not relevant to that keyword, if you've never been indexed for a gifting keyword before, and it's not in your backend search terms, it's not anywhere in your listing, 
you're going to have a problem being seen as relevant for that. And it doesn't matter how high you bid, if you're not adding that to your listing, you're going to have problems. So just, I mean, now be, make sure you're, it's relevant, right? Like you don't, you don't want to be uh, selling a green coffee mug and saying like, this is a great gift for dad, right? <laughs> because, you know, people are not going to click on that and go, oh yeah, that's a great gift for dad. But if you have a product that is honestly a great gift for dad or, you know, then make sure that you're really thinking about how can you sell that product in that way? How can you make it really relevant for that? and um, make sure that you're not just wasting money on advertising, right? Like you're gonna target that keyword and people are going to click and buy. Um, so if you have a product like that, I unfortunately do not have a product where I, <laughs> I mean, people are not really gonna buy a litter box cleaner for Christmas, you know? <laughs> that would be like Tis one of the- the season. <laughs> Tis the season to clean cat poo, no. So, you know, I don't have one of those products. There's other fun things that I can do with my advertising throughout the year. But if you have one of those products, make sure that you're thinking about some of those creative strategies to use. Okay. Yeah. And the um, other, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no go I was ahead. going to say, and, and uh, some of the other things that you guys um, want to do is, uh, I know Amy's mentioned this before and it's right on point that when people uh, do this holiday thing, they go super wide. They go great gift for mom and sister. And, you know, like list like every person they could ever find. What's going to happen there is that you won't get ranked for any of them because you're trying to go too wide. You want to you want to really pick a couple of keywords, um, you know, maybe the same type of, you know, so maybe mom is your your target demo, you know, mm -hmm. then you just want to do variations of, you know, gift for mom, gifts for mom, you know, mom gift, you know, like all the different ways to say it. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's how you want to do it. And, and you really want to concentrate on that word. Uh, or that phrase or those phrases, probably like three to five max. Um, and then you also want to drive outside traffic at the same time. Um, you know, that's the other kind of, you know, secret that's not a secret that, that you have, you and I have been telling people for ages. And I swear to God, everyone's like, offsite traffic, good idea. And I'm like, okay, cool. It's do not get on, do not get on offsite traffic. My ads stay cheap. Um, on my, I, our biggest holiday product, the one that I'm always bragging about, we pretty much turned off PPC and now are only driving off set traffic because it's like, we're getting amazing results for like a fraction of the cost. And did you see that article I posted today, Andy, about, um, uh, it's from like Nacho. Um, I actually just saw it when we get went live. Um, yeah. So they're saying, you know, and we knew, we already knew this over half of Amazon. So what's happening is Amazon, when people use the search engine on Amazon, they are three times more likely to buy, or I think it's six times, six times more likely to buy than if than people who use a search on Walmart or Etsy, other big shopping e-commerce sites, right? And so the, what the article is all about is it breaks down like, well, why is this? What is it about Amazon? And, um, and so they, they were talking about how over half of Amazon's traffic comes from Google, first of all. And then, you know, they're just watching the analytics come in and so what they were able to determine is the reason that why Amazon gets six times more the buys than Walmart or Etsy is because when people do a search on Amazon, Amazon is actually showing them really relevant results. So that's why I did this post today. I'm like, guys, you know, make sure that you're relevant in search engine terms. And Kevin brought up, he said, I don't like this, this automate, this manual work. I need an automated tool to do that. Andy has an automated tool to do that. In fact, that is what I've been doing is, you know, with some of my clients listings, I find, and as Andy says, you can't just put like, and I see this in gift bullets all the time. Like the last bullet is always their gift bullet. And it's like, great gift for Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Secretary's Day, Boss's Day, Teachers, blah, 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 blah. You will never rank. You will ne if you're a great gift for a teacher, be a great gift for a teacher and then find the main ranking keyword phrase for great gifts for teachers, put that in Andy's tool, Seller SEO Listing Lightning, and it's going to give you all the top phrases to use. And then just, re just copy and paste your bullet in there, change out those phrases, click and you're done, and make sure that you're optimizing a full bullet for that keyword and that for those keyword phrases that are relevant to gifts for teachers and not just like, Oh, well, I'm going to be for moms, for teachers, for dads, for, <laughs> yeah. for sports fans, for everybody. Right. So pick those and then use a tool like Andy's uh, seller SEO listing lightning 
and get out there and actually optimize for those phrases. And I just did this with a client's listing the other day and I searched the very next day. And sure enough, I was on page two for some of the gift keywords that I put in there because I didn't just use the phrase once. I used Andy's tool and optimized for all the relevant phrases. So that's how you can cheat. Okay, Kevin, Mitch. Oh, go ahead, hey, Kevin. Hey. Go ahead. Hey, um, I think that, yeah, I think Andy's tool definitely helps actually identifying all those different variations of, for example, like Christmas gift or gift for dad. But it's important to note that you know, that gift for dad, we can go, you know, full razor in on just that specific keyword and all the variations of that. But then there's also like, it might be really applicable for like, I don't know, Father's Day, right? And yeah. then that may be slightly different, but maybe it's actually really good for Mother's Day too. It's like completely relevant for all three of those holidays. And then throw in like a, I don't know, summertime the Labor Day, maybe it's completely relevant for that as well. And so it's like I, the way I interpreted your your response there was, hey, just focus in on one, um, which is I think I totally agree. That probably is the correct manner to do it. But I guess my point is it, I think that it would be really cool to actually be able to morph your entire listing, depending on the time of year, automatically. That's exactly write, what we're saying. That's exactly if, yeah. what we're saying, Kevin. If you write Christmas essentially... Time, you write a listing for, you know, uh, Christmas time, and then you write a whole nother listing for Father's Day, and then you write a whole nother listing for Mother's Day, right? And I don't wanna have to go in and rewrite it. I'll write it all at once when I launch my product, and then I want that thing to automatically switch over based on date time frame that I set. And that is the manual piece that we're doing right now. And if you have 800 SKUs like Andy, like, you need a team of VAs to handle that, right? And uh, anyways, just an idea that I throw yeah. out there. Well, I could see if you had 800 SKUs that were all gift type of SKUs, but you're only going to yeah. have certain seasonal products and, you know, yeah. and only certain ones that are going to be relevant for Mother's Day and Christmas and yeah. Valentine's Day. And, you know, so, yeah. but it's a good strategy, definitely, to make sure, especially during Q4, if you're looking yeah. to capture some of those sales that you're looking at other keywords than just your main keyword. Yeah. So totally. Kevin, so we, we 80, 20, you know, there, there's like Amy was saying, there's probably only 20% of our catalog <laughs> that is applicable that we can use for, you know, gifting type phrases. Um, you can target multiple, you know, uh, you know multiple groups. Um, I'm not saying you can't do that. It's just that, you know, I know that you're, you're getting to the point now where, you know, you're, you're getting pretty sizable. If you have the funds and the means to do that, but, you know, absolutely. Um, but if you don't, uh, you know, if you're a smaller seller and you don't have the marketing uh, means to do it, then you definitely want to focus because you want to get the most bang for your buck um, in terms of, you know, focusing on those keywords. The other reason why you kind of want to focus on, you know, like you said, you know, it, it, it's going to be really hard to write a really great relevant listing for, you know, targeting a dad or a male, you know, because generally males and females, not always, there's definitely unisex products like crazy. But um, if you craft a listing, you know, to everyone, then Amazon's not going to see that relevance when you're going after those main three to five phrases that you think are really going to convert the most. So to me, I would try to narrow it down and at least to a, a couple of personas, um, you know, to, to get it as dialed in as possible. Um, the automation you're talking about, when I first came up with that listing lightning tool, it's one of the things, uh, actually one of the early versions that we ended up scrapping and redoing, um, actually had some really cool kind of features to do that. Um, we have the history um, in listing lightning where you can go, you know, save different versions of the listing. Um, so you can technically use that. Uh, but I get how you'd still have to manually, you know, uh, post it and things like that. Uh, that's something definitely that we might be able to do in the near future. It's just a lot. It, it, it's a lot of uh, API and, coding and crazy and stuff. And Wendy brings up a good point. She said, you know, won't you have to wait about two weeks for, al you know, the algorithm to kick in and lose sales if you change for each holiday? Well, it's not necessarily you have to wait for the algorithm to kick in. But if you change your listing significantly, like if you rewrite the whole thing, um, then you really do, you need to start driving traffic to those new keywords to index for them. 
whether that's on Amazon PPC or even more effectively off of Amazon, such as Google AdWords or doing something like rebate jet to get it going. Right. Um, that's, that's where you have to take into that consideration. And so that's why we did that Q4 episode where we were like, Hey guys, get ready for Q4. Yeah. It's time to get on those press releases. Now it's time to get on those top 10 Christmas lists, all that kind of stuff. Now um, spin up your PPC campaigns now because yep. Uh, it takes some time to, you know, get those impressions and get things going. So good, yeah. very good point, Wendy. Um, put it into your plan. Uh, that's what it's all about, like knowing your audience, knowing your keywords. So something else that I've been um, doing a little bit more lately is I've been studying specific niches and, um, and I kind of have always done this as far as creating PPC campaigns. But now I'm taking it a step further in different niches and doing a lot of reverse searches. So what I think is cool, you know, and Andy, I use your Pandora tool to do this. And it's pretty interesting. If you're, if you're studying a specific niche, let's say you're studying, you know, um, gummy bears. I mean, only because I have them sitting right here. You guys, these are my favorite gummy bears. <laughs> Man, you the, can't the even see them. The invisible my, ones. The it's invisible uh, the invisible gummy bears are the best. The invisible calories. Hold, you have to hold it in front of your face. See, see, it works if you hold it in front of your face. There you go. Sour gummy bears. These are my favorite. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, let's say that I'm searching in the gummy candy category, and I take the top of the page competitor, the one that's ranked the best. Um, I love the DS Amazon quick view plugin. It's a free Chrome plugin and it shows your ranks like right on the page, um, which is really nice. Cause then I can just go to page one for like one main keyword and, and check out like who's playing. I don't need a special tool for that. It's really easy. Right. And what I can see is like, okay, if one competitor is ranked like a thousand, right. In that category. And then, you know, you come down to the next row and this, and all the rest of the competitors are like in the 20,000 range. And then there's a few in like the 100,000 range. Do a reverse search on the keywords for each of those competitors, the ones that's in the top of the list. And, and this is a thing that people miss, right? Because they, they're going and just going, oh my gosh, the number one competitor is selling this much. I'm gonna totally do that. But you don't know what they're targeting but it's not like you can't know what they're targeting, right? So sometime take your category and go in there and do a reverse search, use a tool like Andy's Seller SEO Pandora tool and do a reverse search and see what keywords they're targeting. And you won't believe some of the things that you discover. Um, you won't believe some of you know, the keywords that, um, that the top competitors are targeting compared to those that are very low on the list. Um, so definitely utilize that when you're studying inside of a niche, um, and take that into consideration when you see a top competitor and you're like, wait a minute, why is this one doing so good? And the rest of these are just doing like, okay. And then these are doing really poorly. Have a look at how they're doing. And then also I always recommend people go, um, outside of Amazon too, and look at, uh, what external factors might be um, contributing because you don't know if that uh, if that particular brand is on store shelves you don't know if they have a really good social media strategy you don't know if they're like going crazy on the Pinterest Ooh, Andy we should talk about Pinterest no, right? we, should. we should thanks for tuning in join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.